Hello, my name is Alex Carver. I'm a senior solutions engineer with Pure Storage, primarily covering VMware products and integrations. Today, I want to go ahead and cover virtual volumes and look at it from a more top level holistic view of it and do more of a one-on-one -on -one type of series for it. Really, we want to break down what virtual volumes are, how do they work, what difference do they actually make for you, your environment, your team, uh, and, and what are you able to take advantage of it? What helps to take a look through it is, is when looking through VVols, is to see how does it compare to something that's more traditional, like VMFS. And when doing this, we actually see that there's some new terminology that's being used. There's some new kind of concepts being introduced, have different names. And so we want to make sure that you understand what this different terminology is, what these different objects are that are now being referred to, to make sure that you understand it from that point of view to be able to speak about it, know if this is something that you need to incorporate, and go from there. So if we look at a VM and VMs on a traditional VMFS, you would have multiple VMs, and more often than not, they would all be sharing either a single data store or a group of data stores. Now, these data stores would often map, and in the case with the flash array, will map directly to a single volume on the array. Now, different features that are uh, and capabilities that are delivered from the storage to individual volumes, such as QoS, snapshot protection, replication, delivered at that individual volume basis. And so if I provide a feature to this volume, it's then inherited to that VMFS data store and to the different VMs. And so all those VMs now share the same features and the same capabilities that were delivered to that individual volume on the array. There's not a lot of customization or control that you can do. You're not protecting your applications or protecting or supporting your different VMs individually. Rather, you're protecting that VMFS data store. And so with this problem with scale, policy management, compliance, VMware introduced the concept of vSphere virtual volumes. Call them VVOLs. The concept here is that the, the virtual volumes of VMs that are using VVOLs, they would be able to then have more direct objects directly with the storage array. And you would have this kind of granular mapping of each VM would have its own objects. And so you would have your different virtual disks. And you would have the configuration for that VM. And these would map directly to individual volumes on the storage itself. Why is that important? Well, this means now that instead of just providing services and features and capabilities to an entire VMFS data store, I can provide them to an individual virtual disk themselves, which I can provide that then. If an application shares multiple virtual disks, then give that set of policies or, or uh, capabilities to those set of virtual disks. So now I'm actually able to provide different features and support of those features at a granular level to the application level, virtual disk, and VM level. So I have more control over the configuration and management of my VMs. As opposed to managing VMFS data stores, I'm now able to manage my VMs and the applications there are and provide the capabilities up to them. So now having that view of a I want to go ahead and dig into some of the other points and, and the moving objects parts of VVOLs and how they work and the terminology used when trying to describe them and explain them. 